Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Looks like we got some pretty good attendance. So we want to welcome everybody for attending. Welcome to I Am Dope Leadership Academy workshops, where we are mentorship program anchored in workforce development for kids 11 to 18. So what we typically do is we'll start these um workshops and we we do the uh the workshop with the curriculum that's based on whatever the series is we have four pillars which are leadership life skill enhancement mental uh and physical wellness and career so we build on the first three to help kids find the career pathways for which we have a program for that in place and what we typically do is we end these with the expert guest speaker to tie it all together with what we do. This morning, we're going to start with the expert guest speaker because we uh, want to get him out and around and introduce to everyone who is familiar with him, as well as those who may not be as familiar. So I want to welcome a good friend of mine, Mr. Kevin Graves, the... Uh, owner operator of SWG Consulting. He is the um, manager of NBA players, um, non-NBA players, He's personal manager of um, professional athletes, was a great athlete himself. Remember watching him growing up. Of course, we're both same area, Phillips Avenue, growing up Page High School. Um, Mac Morris talked very well about you. I don't know if I ever mentioned that to you before, but that's how I know you. So, um, I want to, I want to make sure that I introduce him properly. Uh, but without further ado to here to discuss personal branding, which is a very important topic for, for all of us is understanding how to use your brand to get to the next level of anything not just basketball for those of us who are, who are here that are associated with our basketball program. It's not just basketball. This is more about life. Um, Kevin's been through it. He's seen it. He's good on, on building on, on understanding how to leverage those building blocks. So without further ado, I want to introduce Mr. Kevin Graves, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you so much, D. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for the opportunity um, anytime I can come on and touch young people's lives and help uplift them, change their trajectory in many ways by changing their thinking pattern. And uh, I would like to say before I start, open your mind up. Don't be offended by anything I say. Be influenced. I'll say that again. Open up your mind. Don't be offended by anything that I say. Be influenced by what I say and figure out how you can take the things that I say today and put them into your life's plan, your life's blueprint, and your level of uplifting yourself academically, lifting yourself spiritually, lifting yourself emotionally, psychologically. All of these things matter as we move through this lifespan. I'd like to say branding, I'll start with products. If you think about branding, you think about companies and you think about products, every day you wake up, you have a path you take to get to your destination. That destination may be your practice. It may be your office. It may be your church or other affinity groups. You're having a path to take and you take a path that becomes almost traditional like. Because you don't wake up five days in a row and do a different routine. No one does. Most of us wake up and our routine when we get up out of bed is pretty much the same. So I will start by saying, when I get up, the first thing I do normally is I go to the restroom. Second thing I do normally is I go straight to my sink I get ready to moisturize my face, brush my teeth, floss my teeth. And I'm starting with this because I'm telling you guys, branding has a lot to do with personal hygiene. We have young people. We have old people. We have middle-aged people. 
who don't understand how hygiene plays into how someone else looks at you. When you come into a room, you are your own brand. When you come into that room, think about yourself as the brands that you used on your path that day. So when I get up, I may use Colgate. When I get up, I may use Colgate dental floss. When I get up, I may use Listerine mouthwash. All of those are brands. They branded themselves so that when you walk into a Harris Teeter, when you walk into a Food Lion, when you walk into a CVS or a Walgreens, you're looking for that product. Out of all of the different mouthwashes you could probably use, many people look for Listerine. Out of all the many toothpastes you could use, a lot of people look for Colgate for different reasons. Some people may want the charcoal paste. Some people may want the mint paste. They give you a different variety of everything that they're selling. But the first thing they have to do, they have to get your attention because it's saturated with the amount of products that are out here. You have to start looking at yourself as the top tier of every product that you see on the shelves. When you wake up, you say, I go to high school, go to middle school. It's hundreds and thousands of kids in high school and middle school. How do I differentiate myself so that people understand this is my personal brand? This is who I am. Number one is hygiene. It's your teeth. It's your hands. It's your hair. It's your nails. If you have dirty hands and you're coming to a job interview, someone sees dirt under your fingernails, you may not get that job. If you have very, very, very bad hygiene with your hair and you have dandruff flakes all over your black, blue, or brown jacket, someone may notice that. If you're the person that doesn't care about dental hygiene and you have crust around your gum line, you won't go get your teeth cleaned. And some people say, well, I don't have dental insurance, but you had enough money to go to the nightclub. <laughs> Some people may say, well, I don't have enough money to get my scalp done a certain way. Well, you have enough money to go out here and spend on video games. So you have to start looking as a young person. Sure. That I can propel myself to the top. So first of all, I talked about hygiene. Second of all, I'm going to talk about apparel. So you're clean now. Good oral hygiene, you take a shower every day, you put lotion on so people don't see that your hands are ashy, your elbows, you take care of everything you need with your personal hygiene. Now, what about your apparel? Are you studying what type of dress, what type of attire, what type of apparel you have to wear in every single job opportunity there is out there? We know that surgeons, nurses, people who are phlebotomists, they can wear scrubs to work. A banker can't wear scrubs to work. We know that a football coach on the sideline, some of them are going to have their arms exposed with a polo shirt. Think about that now. If your arms are going to be exposed as a college football coach, what if there are coaches out here that don't want your arms to visibly be covered with tattoos on television? Do you think it's a good idea to go out here? Your, your own skin is part of your apparel. And I'm bringing this up because I've talked to some young kids and they're like, what I put on my body is, is my opinion. What I put on my neck is my opinion. No, that's not true. It's your opinion when you're young. But when you get older, you don't give yourself a job. So you have to think about your cleanliness and hygiene. You got to think about the clothes that you put on every day. Now you got to think about your skin. If you have tattoos, that's fine. But when you put them on your hands, your knuckles, your neck, your face, and behind your ear, where it's visible above my collar level, there are a lot of jobs that will not employ you. 
They won't tell you why you didn't become employed. They're just not going to employ you. So let's talk about that. How many of you want a tattoo and you want that tattoo to be on your neck? How many of you want a tattoo, but you want that tattoo to be on your hands where it can be seen? See, if I pull up my watch and I pull up my shirt and I pull up my jacket, I don't have tattoos on my hands. I don't have them on my knuckles. Because when you come into a corporate sector and you talk about high levels of leadership, you're branding yourself so that you can get the type of jobs to help you become an independent person one day. I've worked for many companies. I was in the U.S. Air Force for eight years, active duty. And you have to follow some forms of conformity so that you can make the type of dollars you want to have a nice house, to have a nice car, and to have these things without being stressed out every day and thinking, if a pandemic comes, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I don't have employment. If a pandemic comes, what am I going to do? How do I pay my mortgage? If a pandemic comes again, what am I going to do? How am I going to pay my car notes? When you have discretionary income, you can pay that car off. The types of jobs that give you discretionary are the types of jobs that you need to be thorough in your hygiene, thorough in your apparel and dress, thorough in how you put ink and tattoos on your body. And then the fourth thing I'm going to talk about is your speech. Many of us, I grew up, D told you, we, we grew up in an area in Greensboro called Woodmere Park. I saw Phillips Avenue and the WFNY television. Um, some people consider it the hood because we had, you know, public housing there called Claremont Courts. And for me, we had people in my neighborhood that taught me, whatever you do when you get older, grow daily. Grow daily. Don't live the same way at 13 that you do at 16. Don't live the same at 25 that you were living at 16. Don't live the same at 35 that you did as 25. So with that being said, I would like to say a lot of kids don't understand articulated thoughts, speech patterns, how to talk to people in public communication wise and how to change up. You have to be able to code switch. And I'm going to give you an example. When I'm around my friends. Yo, what up, bro? What's good? How you doing? All right. Yeah, man. It's you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, come on, bro. Man, LeBron ain't doing it like that, man. Come on. See, that's what my friends, when I'm in a corporate entity, a corporate sector, and I'm having business meetings with attorneys, with CPAs, with other business managers, with people who run NBA franchises, I cannot articulate my thoughts the way I do when I'm with my friends in the hood. Some people say, well, you can't change your dialect. Well, some of us have a Southern draw, but that doesn't mean we can't change it. If I grow up and I realize, okay, I speak with a Southern draw, I'm not going to talk like this if I'm going to business meeting. I can talk like that around my cousins in Brown Summit, but I can't talk like that unless I'm at a NASCAR race throwing back a course light. I mean, you have to learn where you are, how to talk, how to articulate those thoughts in a proper manner. And that's not just speech. We're talking about branding. You never know when you create a memory, good or bad. And you never know when you won't change your speech pattern and you're using slang in a corporate entity, now you've missed an opportunity to propel yourself in trajectory. Communication is not just speech, guys. Communication is a phone call. Why do I say communication is just a phone call? Because how many people in this lifetime, when they get older, they make the excuse, oh man, I missed your call. I forgot to call you back. I've been doing this a long time. I'm 52 years old. I've never not call someone back ever. I have never heard a voicemail. Oh man, I forgot. I, man, I skipped that one. I'm sorry. Communication is checking your voicemails. Communication is checking all of your text messages. 
Communications is sending a text message back and a reply because that is proper communication. And if you don't do that, you're going to miss some opportunities in life. I keep hearing about young people today, text wise, phone call wise, talking slang, text wise, texting slang. You can't text an office of human resources the way you text your friends from Snapchat. And TikTok, you can't do it. It won't work. You're going to limit yourself and cut down on your personal brand. You can't send an email and in the topic bar, just put anything you want. You have to learn how to properly email people who are going to help propel you, people who are going to help give you another job at the next level. They say you never know when you create a memory. They also say, that the five pillars of happiness are free your heart of hatred, free your mind of worries, live simple, give more, and expect less. Let me repeat those if you ever want to write this down. These are the five pillars of happiness. Free your heart of hatred, free your mind of worries, live simple, give more, and expect less. Then there's four levels of maturity. Incisive judgment, emotional balance, moral and spiritual rectitude, and acceptance of reality. We have a lot of young people that don't want to accept reality. I can't believe they didn't give me that job. That was racist. That was this. No, what happened is you sent an email back to them with run on sentences, double negatives, misspell words, bad uh punctuation, and then you took the email and you sent it three days late from the date that they were requiring you to send it in. Some of you will go through a lot with peer pressure. Peer pressure is, you know, all my boys at school are doing this. Man, I got to do what my boys do. No, that's not true. Look at what everyone else is doing and do the opposite. I didn't grow up with a lot of money. I grew up with a mom who had breast cancer. She passed away when I was 15. She had breast cancer from my second grade year to my 10th grade year. Had a father who was a train mechanic at Amtrak Norfolk Southern. He didn't make a lot of money. It was four children in our household. I was the second, my older brother, myself, my sister, and my baby brother. A train mechanic salary trying to take care of four kids with a wife who's dying of breast cancer. So when I was growing up and it came to branding, I didn't look at my friends. Oh, man, look at him. He got dye in his hair. He got the, the Wiz Khalifa dye. He, he got the dreadlocks with the dye on the tips. He got the mohawk with the red down the middle. This dye. No, 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 no. I was preparing myself for who I am right now. So I looked at what everyone else was doing and I did the complete opposite. Man, they all going to the prom. Okay, calculated risk. Let me look at how much the prom costs. Okay, tuxedo, 300. This is back in the 80s. 1987, 88. Tuxedo, 300. Oh, I got to get the girl a corsage flower and I got to get me a corsage flower. I got to pay for a limousine. Oh, man, I got to pay for our prom tickets. Oh, I got to take her to the Chop House or Ruth Chris or Village Tavern to eat. Uh, that's about maybe about $900. I was the person that looked at everybody spending $900 on dates that they were never going to know after their first year of college again. And I saved my money and I kept saving my money. And that's how I built my own company. I never took out a loan to start my own company. I saved. I don't celebrate holidays. No disrespect to everybody who celebrates them. I celebrate them with family, but I don't celebrate them monetarily. That's part of my brand. I had to build my brand with SWG Consulting. My company is named after my father's initials, Spencer Warren Graves. That's what SWG stands for. So, when I was building my brand, I didn't start building my brand when I was 45. I didn't start building my brand when I was 32. I started building my brand when I was in high school 
and I looked at what everyone else was doing and I did the opposite. I had friends who they love sneakers. That sneaker freak stuff didn't start yesterday. It started in the 70s. Got to have this pair of shoes. Got to have the new Kyrie's. Got to have the LeBron's. So you done spent almost a thousand on the prom. Now you out here telling your mom that you need to save up so you can buy some new Jordans. You're not telling your mom I need to save up so I can buy me a house and have me a rental property by the time I'm 28. You're telling your mom you need a sneaker collection. So you got the Kyrie's, the Paul George's. You got the, the new Jason Tatum's. You got every pair of Jordans that ever came out. Their retros, their new stuff. Now you're about 10,000 in with your sneaker collection by the time you're 20. 10,000 in where you could have got a house in the hood. You could have did a fixer up on this house. You could have rented this house. And instead of spending 10,000, you could be making 15,000 a year on rental properties. Some of us don't look at that. That's part of your brand. Part of your brand is not only the communication aspect, but how did you Go through life in that path, just like you had that path to the bathroom to brush your teeth, dental floss, and do the Listerine and take a shower. You got a path through life on, did I do it the right way so I could be independently doing things for myself and my family? Or did I do it the wrong way and now I'm 40 years old borrowing money from everybody because I can't, I can't get paycheck to paycheck. The people that are out here and you know some of them, they're just not telling you. They made a lot of bad decisions with their branding, their personal past, and they get to 40, 50 years old and they're struggling weekly and daily. I don't want you guys to be that person. Everything you do from your cleanliness to the way you communicate, to the way you talk to people, it's all a part of your brand for what you can do next. Look at the brands we have in the grocery store that aren't personal hygiene products, what's something we all use? Water. We all use water. Water is branded a certain way. From tap water, to Aquafina, to Deer Park, to Dasani, to Fiji. We know what water in that grocery store is clean, which one tastes a little cloudy, which one, when you grab the plastic bottle, you can crumble it with your pinky. And which one has the bottle that's stern where you grab it and you can throw it on the ground and it won't even bust? See, we know Fiji water is not Deer Park. We know that. Look at yourself the same way the rest of your life. Do I want to be Fiji or do I want to be tap water? Which one do I want? When someone walks in and they look and say, okay, look at that bottle of water. It's kind of cloudy. Looks kind of gray. Mm, doesn't taste right. Tastes like it's got lead in it. The cap came off so easy that it felt like it wasn't even sealed. And if I threw it on the ground, the bottle would bust everywhere because the plastic is so thin. I'm giving y'all details. That's the same way people look at you as a human. When you're standing in the crowd, man, why is his suit so wrinkled? Man, why does he have on a white dress shirt with ring around the collar so bad I could see it on the outside of the collar? Man, why does he have on a clip-on tie and he's 32 years old? Why would you have a clip-on tie? Why would you have clip-on suspenders and you in your 30s? Think about that, young people. That's part of your brand. The people at the highest levels of everything, they know the stitch count on a suit. They know if your tie, tie is tied on a Windsor knot, a double Windsor, a standard, they know if that bow tie you got on was tied by you in the mirror or if it's a clip-on tie. As soon as they walk in the room, you have to grow so that you can make sure people look at you and your brand and they know when they're looking at you Man, he's detail-oriented. Man, he's always on time. I've had an AAU team. I have my company now. I've worked at many places. I've never been late. I'm in a college fraternity. 
I've been to business meetings in my fraternity, local, regional, national level. I've never skipped them. I never missed them. I always paid my dues in my fraternity because that's part of my brand. That's part of who I am. I don't want to be in a college fraternity. Both of my sons are in my fraternity now. When it was time for my sons to get letters of recommendation, I didn't want to be that guy. Um, can y'all help me get my sons in the fraternity? Well, Kevin, you haven't paid dues in 23 years. See, that's part of that's part of your brand. How you pay dues. Some of y'all are not going to realize it until you go apply for a job. Some municipal jobs now, fire, police, chamber of commerce, all these jobs, they actually do a credit check. Some of y'all didn't know that. You go to the military now, they're doing credit reports on you to see, okay, you're 25, you want to join the army, but you have a 400 credit score. Like that's not good. They don't think you're trustworthy. They don't think that you could do a job for them because you don't do that job for yourself. They don't think you can come clean in their company because they have a friend that went by your house and your house was nasty. If your house is nasty and you don't clean your house, what makes them think you're going to clean at their office? You're going to junk up their office the same way you junked up your car. This is personal branding. I know y'all probably didn't think you'd hear some of this today. You parked your car in the parking lot at MX Corporate. Someone parked beside you, looked in your car, and saw an old bottle of water laying in the seat, French fries from McDonald's laying in the floorboard, shrimp shells from some shrimp you bought in the door handles. Oh, they see it through your window. And they're like, if that person treats their own automobile like that on the inside, okay, let's get to the outside. You got leaves all stuck in your grill from the fall because you won't get your car washed. You got brake dust so thick on your front wheels that it's, your front wheels are black and your back wheels are chrome. You think they can't tell that you don't have a spirit of cleanliness? So what is he going to do to my company car if he'll do that to his regular car? Personal branding. Let's think about all of these companies. If you drink cranberry juice, ocean spray, if you drink ginger ale, Canada Dry. If you drink soda, Coke products. If you eat pickles right here in North Carolina, Mount Olive Pickles. All of these companies have corporate offices. All of these companies' corporate offices hire top-notch talent. Top-notch talent does not mean that you are academically superior but structurally you can't get your stuff together because you could be an extremely smart individual but you can't function in group settings and group dynamics because you can never be on time you drink too much we got to talk about alcohol and drugs because there's a lot of people who have changed their lives for the negative because they got drunk the night before they missed the interview the next day and they missed an opportunity of a lifetime. They overslept. It's that simple. How many kids could have been college coaches, but when they played college basketball, they overslept for five practices and got kicked off the team? I had a kid that I know, won't mention his name, went on a trip to Paris with his college team, drank the night before, overslept when the college team went to the Eiffel Tower. Is this not crazy? You're in Paris. The college, Division I college team is paying for the trip. You're going to Paris for free. They even paid for you to get a passport. You get over there. The day that you guys are going to see the biggest monument in Paris, the Eiffel Tower, they're calling your cell phone. They're knocking on your, your door at your hotel. You're so passed out that you can't hear your cell phone or people trying to kick your door in. Missed opportunities. Now, 
What does that have to do with Brandon? Why is Mr. Graves talking about that? Because those five college assistant coaches and graduate assistant coaches and that head coach of that college, they know 7,000 other coaches. So now when he graduates, man, can you help me get on as a grad assistant? I can't help you. You the guy that slept through the Eiffel Tower. You never know when you create a memory, good or bad. You never know. And as you grow, you will learn that a lot of things you didn't know in high school and middle school, you pick them up along the way. When I was young, I wore a clip on tie to the little East with my little Easter outfit, but I can't do that now. So I brought these for you guys. I tie my ties pre tie to save time. This is a Wednesday night. Every one of my ties are pre tied. I hang them in my closet. Same knot, same length. Every one. This right here saves me time because now when I'm putting a suit on, I don't have to run to try to tie my tie because I don't have a lot of time. I have a lot of stuff to do in my life. I also have three children. Two of them are grown. My daughter's 13. I'm running to her tennis practice to pick her up. I'm running to do stuff for my fraternity. I'm running to do philanthropy with some of my athletes. I got stuff going on. When I was young, it would be simple to get a clip on tie. Now I made my own clip on ties. I, I tie my ties pre-tie. So when I put them on, if I have a seminar with you guys today, I just put this on, zipped it up. It's time to go. You guys got to learn as you go. You got to learn that you can't have on a brown belt with black dress shoes. You can't have on, I have on wine colored shoes today. Same wine colored shoes. Same color wine belt. Okay. Burgundy. Burgundy. If I have on brown, brown. If I it's summertime and I have on some white shoes, white belt. You guys have to pay attention to detail. In everything, when you're putting clothes on from your suit, your tie, your pocket square, your lapel pin, your your tie bar right here, everything you put on should be so detailed that a person says, man, they created a memory in me that lets me know they're thorough. They're thorough in everything they do. His car was clean when he pulled up. His suit was nice when he stepped out. His shoes matched his belt. He had suspender buttons inside his pants. All of this stuff matters. He didn't have on so much cologne that he choked me when he walked in the room. That's part of it too now. Some of y'all gonna spray on so much cologne that you walk in a job interview and everybody think you a skunk like Pepe Le Pew or something when you walk in. You can't do that. You have to understand tones and you'll understand those as you get older. Last thing I want to talk about is kids trying to be so cool. You know, I have shades, but I'm not going to, I'm doing this with you guys today. You guys see me with my glasses on. I'm going to give you an image in your head right quick. Tell me if you logged on the Zoom today, and this is what you saw when you logged on, if you would have been like, is something wrong with him? Did someone poke him in the eye? Does he have pink eye? Like, what's wrong with him? Because we got kids today walking around at nighttime with shades on at certain events. You're creating bad memories. So this, imagine I log on like this today. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing today? What's good? I mean, you're going to look at me like I'm half crazy. You put certain things, you create these memories in people, and it doesn't create a good memory in certain people's minds. Okay, I take these off. What if I log on like this? No different. These are just gold trim and they still, you can't see my eyes. And when I see kids, young people, people that are lesser age than me, and they're walking through a basketball game at night with shades on in Miami or Houston, or when I'm out in LA, the first thing I think, and you can tell me I'm wrong, is that they're hot. That's the first thing I think. Like, he is, it's 10 o'clock at night, 
He's walking through the Staples Center in L.A. He has shades on, but it's dark outside. Like, why is he what? And then he's talking to me. I can't see his eyes. I want to see people's eyes. I want to see their facial expression. That's part of your brand. How professional are you? I'll end with this and then I'll open it up for questions. I talked about the peer pressure and you following people who aren't headed anywhere. I want all of you young people to start figuring out by the middle of high school, baby, beginning of your 11th grade year, what you want to do in your life, what job you want to have and how you're going to attack getting that job. And then what I want you to do after that, I want you to find every person that accomplished that job at the highest level. And I want you to look at their grooming standards, their cleanliness, their reputation in the community, and the way they articulate their thoughts verbally, email, text message, whatever. So if I say, I want to be a college basketball coach. Jay Wright was an unbelievable college basketball coach at Villanova. He dressed like me. They called him the best dressed college coach ever. When he was winning national championships at Villanova, that was not a mistake because his path to the bathroom was the same as his path to his car, was the same as his path to his office, was the same as his path in that practice session, and it was the same as Villanova holding up that trophy. When they hit in last-second shots against Carolina, one of my kids, Theo Pinson, was on that team. When Jenkins hit that shot with no time left and sent North Carolina home with a second-place trophy, Chris Jenkins was trained by somebody who was thorough. If you want to be an accountant, find the accountants that are thorough. If you want to be a banker, an investment banker, you find the people that are thorough. If you want to be an investment advisory guy, they make a lot of money. Find the investment advisory guys and say, let me see. I got five investment advisory guys. This guy's done about a billion. This guy's done about two billion. This guy's done about seven billion. These guys are super wealthy. I could be that one day, but I can't be that one day looking like Kodak Black. And I can't be that way looking like Travis Scott. And I can't get there looking like um, Little Wayne. It won't happen for me. I'm a realist. What did I tell you guys earlier? Incisive judgment, emotional balance, moral and spiritual rectitude, and acceptance of reality. The reality is if you're not trying to be a rapper, if you're not trying to be the 25 jobs in basketball over the players, you can't look like some of these players with tattoos on their necks and dreads with dye on the tips. They can play basketball like that, but can they be a coach, player personnel director, statistician, a referee in the NBA? I mean, referees in the NBA make about 600000 a year. Part-time. Mr. Hockley, that was the number one ref in the NFL had one of the biggest law practices in his city. Yes, he was an attorney and ref in NFL games on Sunday when you would see him on television. Part time getting another 600,000. He didn't have tattoos on his arms because the NFL don't want to show that on TV. He didn't go out and say, you know what? I'm going to talk crazy in public and somebody record me on social media. He couldn't do it. So I want you guys to start studying who you're going to be. You want to be a dentist? Look at the top dentist in your city. You want to be an accountant? See who those accountants are. But what I want you to do is the way you study those video games, the way you know all the little features on Fortnite, the way you know how all the little players are on NBA 2K, study the S&P 500 the same way. Study what fixed annuities are the same way. Study what Roth IRAs are and CDs are the same way. Study the bank and the Federal Reserve System the same way. Study your craft first and then listen to rap and all of that stuff last. I love rap. 
I listen to rap just like y'all do. That's why I know who Kodak Black is. I know who Future is. I know who Drake is. I know who all of them, Travis Scott, because I love their music. But I've made enough money to take care of my family first. And I've practiced conformity for my brand. So when I walk in a room with an Asian, a Middle Easterner, a Black, American, an African from Uganda, from Ghana, from I was just in Johannesburg this year. I can function with anybody anywhere. And I'm not trying to scare people when I walk into a room with my hair, my lack of lotion, my cologne, my lint on my jacket, my shoes that don't match my belt. Personal branding is all of that, especially the communication side. So I'd like to open it up um, for questions, D, if any of them have a couple of questions before I go. And if you need me to come back later, I can later to speak again, but I just I got a, another Zoom call that I got to get on in about 30 minutes. Yeah. And thank you again. And and of course, we're going to have you back. I don't even think that's a that's a question because the, these events are powerful for you and the other speakers that we had as well. So I want to thank you again. Um, one question that we had here was um, just to go through, if you don't mind taking a taking a minute just to kind of briefly give a synopsis on your career path. How did Kevin Graves start? How did he end where he where he is now? That kind of um, thing. You alluded to it, but we wanted to see that pathway. Right. When I when I left college, when I left UNCG, I went to the US Air Force. I was stationed in San Antonio, Texas. Um, I then was stationed in uh, Washington, DC. Prince George's County area at Andrews Air Force Base, Brooks Air Force Base is where I was in San Antonio. I get out of the Air Force. This is a true story. I uh, I came home, and when I came home, I was teaching PE at Greensboro Day School, fifth through eighth grade PE. I was the head varsity track and field coach. I was the head girls varsity basketball coach. So, um, you know, my background is kinesiology. That's what I have my degrees in, exercise and sports science. So that's I taught physiology to pilots in the Air Force. So I'm a science guy by trade, but I'm, I'm teaching PE at Greensboro Day School. And my buddy, Mike Rowan, who went to Wake Forest, one of my fraternity brothers, he's literally working for a company called Pro Sports Financial down in uh, Fort Lauderdale. And he calls me and he's like, listen, they have 50, 60 football players. Calvin Pace, LaRon Landry, Glenn Dorsey. They got all these football guys in the NFL. He said, but they want to start a basketball division because we know basketball players make way more money and they're more visible. They make way more endorsement money, everything. So he said, Kev, you're like a basketball savant. I said, well, I don't even really know what they do. But what they did at the time, they were – a company that helped athletes with their investments, their estate planning documents, their wills and trusts, limited liability corporations set up things of that nature. So basically, that's how I got into what I was doing with my buddy, Mike Rowan. So he had a company called Capital Management Group, was working with Mike, and then learning the industry through that, that's how I basically went independent on my own. But that's that's my career path. I was at Greensboro Day minding my business, coaching PE, and then I end up moving to a whole nother industry, but I was able to adapt because of I had prepared myself for so long. And then once I started managing athletes and I'm like, okay, you know, you're making good money, but some people make good money and waste it. I'm one of those people that I made some good money, but I put money into kids. I did what you're doing. I put money into our youth and doing that, Think about this. A lot of some I know someone was asking me one time, man, you know, you know, you're around Bam out of bio. I had Bam when he was 12. People don't know that. Like I could have been managing athletes and buying Rolexes. And, you know, some of the people that are on this call today that I know, they they rode around in my Range Rover. And, you know, I used to one of my <laughs> biggest mentees is on this call and she's a mentor now. You know, but I t when I used to take her to school at UNC Wilmington in my Range Rover, she thought I was a drug dealer. <laughs> but 
I mean, she's like, what do you do? And I'm like, I work. I have to get up and work for this. But some people are into traveling these expensive trips and buying Rolex watches. I don't want a $40,000 watch. I have a Tissot the Tiso watch sponsored the NBA and gave Bam this watch his rookie season. It's the only watch I own. I don't believe in buying jewelry, watches, excessive stuff that I don't need. But the trips that uh, I was able to take, Dennis Smith Jr., Aaron Wiggins, Bam Adebayo, they, you know, Harry, G Harry Giles first. Hello? Sorry about that. No, right, it's yeah. okay. No, Harry Giles' first time being on an airplane, he was nine years old with me going to New Orleans. That's the stuff that's cool. That's just the you you looking at, okay, he hadn't been on an airplane, but first time he went with him and his parents, he was with me when I had my um AAU team at that time. So you got to think about, man, life is life is about building, teaching. Um, look at what everyone else is doing and do the opposite. Because most people who have made some of the money I've made, they and Sandra Pay, they going, they on yachts, they doing all this stuff with Rolexes. I'm not into that. I'm about building communities and children. But that's if does that answer the question the person had about my career path? Because that's yeah. pretty much how. Yeah, no, ab absolutely. It's um, like you said, we 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 do this for the kids, as you can see, we. Uh, just like my group, we've been around doing some things. I wanted to um, open it up for questions, so don't be shy, kids. Kevin's an open book. He'll he'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, Kev, I did like that you brought up some of the things that we, we actually do in our curriculum for the Career Pathways program, which is one of them is financial literacy, which is a big, big piece. We do that in conjunction with a group here called uh, Wall Street Juniors. Again, we moderate the workshop and then they come in as the expert because that's what they do. They're experts in that. We're also going to have a group of men in terms of how to tie ties. So we do things like that, like dining etiquette, dressing etiquette. All the things that Kevin talked about are the things that we go through. That's why him coming here was so important. So I wanted y'all to know. And one of the exercises that he gave you you don't have to wait till later if you want to at 11 o'clock. We're going to go through the workbook. There's an activity that it, that actually addresses what you were talking about, which was the, um, it's not the elements of building a personal brand. It was the um, finding the super skill. So being able to unleash and identify the super skill to see what it is that you need to do going forward. So for anyone that wants to hang around at 11 o'clock to do that, there's a quiz afterwards. Winner of the quiz wins twenty five dollars. So, I'm just saying, you, you can go. You can go eat at one of these half expensive restaurants for free. What, <laughs> <laughs> whatever you can do with the twenty five. But the but the question, the floor is open for everybody. If you want to ask questions, feel free. Kayla, Robert, definitely uh, ask questions if you got them. What are the most common mistakes people make when it comes to financial management? I would say overspending. Um, you don't have to make a lot of money to build your life starting out. But if you make a moderate amount of money and you spend a lot, you're going to be in trouble. Because you're going to you're going to ruin your credit because what's going to happen is you're going to get upside down with your cash flow. And now you feel like you're embarrassed. You don't want your family to know that you can't pay your rent. So now you go out and you get an unsecured credit card with a $2,000 limit and you can't even pay the credit card. So now you're taking cash off the credit card. You're paying your rent with that and you're paying the minimum amount on the credit card, which is like $15 a month. And then you do that to the credit cards maxed out. Now you're stuck and can't pay the credit card because you lost your job. Now you lose your job. You can't pay the $15 a month. Now the credit card is sending you stuff and they want to do a charge off because you ain't paid them in a year and a half. I mean, this is this type of stuff that goes on out here. 
Another example, kids who go to college, they need enough money to go to college and to eat and to live in the dorm or an apartment. They'll go out and get a student loan so big so that they can go to Auntie Homecoming, have some new Tim boots on, new Jordans, match an outfit. I mean, they literally take $4,000 straight to the mall with a student loan. This thing is going to grow to like 12 to 14% later. <laughs> They don't realize that. they like, I went to school four years, took out all the student loans. Now it's added up to around, let's say, 65K. So you got $65,000 you owe in student loans. Now you're like, oh, I got to go to grad school. So now you go to grad school, take out another 40K. Some of these schools like Wake Forest, 50 some thousand a year. So now you done took out all these student loans. Now when that loan company come back and they want their payments, you in trouble because, number one, you took out those loans and shouldn't have. You spent them on the wrong things. Number two, you leave college. You get some girl pregnant. Now y'all got a kid. Now you got daycare, infamil, pampers. <laughs> you got to buy your baby clothes. You got to pay for y'all a place to stay, and them student loans ain't going to stop. Now you default on the student loans, and your credit is almost ruined forever. So I'm giving you examples of how people want to shine. They want to keep up with the Joneses. What did I tell you guys earlier? Look at what everyone else is doing and do the opposite. I told you I don't celebrate Christmas monetarily. My kids have never gotten Christmas gifts. And I don't have a tree in my house. I don't do reefs on my door. But guess what? I don't do it with any holiday because in America... You can be hypnotized by a holiday every 12 days if you count them. You guys didn't know that, did you? So let's do a party at the house for New Year's Eve. Okay, it's a four-day weekend for Martin Luther King. Okay, I got to buy my girl some flowers for Valentine's. Got to get some chocolates. Okay, just hit St. Patty's Day. Got to go drink some green beer. Then I got to hit Easter, then Labor Day, then Mother's Day, then Father's Day, then Memorial Day, then Fourth of July, then Halloween. Come on now. Thanksgiving. We got to have a feast. OK, you just had a feast, but you can't afford your rent. So you just feasted with the family. You went out and bought all the my, my daughter wants some iPods and earbuds and an iPhone and an iPad. Uh oh. You just went and took out that same credit card I just told you about, young man. Now you don't went and got a Best Buy credit card. So now you got, you owe Chase, you owe Visa, you owe American Express, you owe Best Buy. You ain't got no money because we're in a two-year pandemic. You could have lived simple, gave more, and expected less. What did I say? The five pillars of happiness. Free your heart of hatred, free your mind of worries, live simple, give more and expect less. If you live simple, give more and expect less, there's no stress. So now you don't have to free your mind of worries because you ain't never worried about nothing. But the biggest thing, youngin, is overspending. And I'm talking about, I know some people out here, I got to have a Birkin bag. I got to have Kristen Louboutin shoes because they red bottoms. Girl, buy you some shoes from Payless. And let me spray paint the bottom of them red. You'll be good. All right. Thank you. Yeah. That'll cost you about $70. But you want some $1,700 heels? What are we doing in our society? I have a bag. I'm going to go grab it right quick, D. I want the kids to see this. I have a bag that the NBA promoted with Louis Vuitton. Yeah, that's the one I was talking to you about before. Yeah. Just, so ahead, so this... This bag was a collaboration because now everything is a collaboration. We got to do a collab with Travis Scott and the, and the Jordans. The kids are losing their mind because Nike reversed the swoosh the other way and put Travis Scott's name on it. They only going to release a certain amount of pair. Kids are telling their moms and dads, Mom, I got to have these Travis Scott's. Not for $1,500, you don't. It's the same sneaker that I got that's a Jordan 1 with the swoosh the other way. Well, let me tell you, this Louis Vuitton bag, during the bubble, the finals between the Lakers 
in the Miami Heat, they gave each player two of them a piece, a brown one with red, white, and blue accents, and a white one with blue and white accents and gold. That's the one Bam gave me. This bag, after the NBA players walked around and took you know pictures on them on Instagram and stuff, they gave them to them for free, guys. The bag was $11,000, a duffel bag. $11,000 duffel bag. And I'll admit, when I'm in the airport sometime with the bag, people are like, man, what kind of bag is that? Because the end of the bag, they put an NBA net, a, a, a basketball net attached to the leather. And it's got the NBA logo on it. But see how they get your attention with the Travis Scotts and the Louis Vuitton bags. And we have people out here who don't own homes. They don't own a house. And they buying this stuff. They're buying $1,700 heels. They're buying $11,000 bags. They're buying $1,500 sneakers. When me and D was coming up, this stuff didn't exist. Nah, not at all. Yeah. But if I tell a kid, look, I got some duplexes and triplexes. I want you to come in and invest with me. Give me $15,000 of your money. I'm going to buy this property over here off Summit Avenue for $149,000. Bulldozed the property. A day later, the property was worth three hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars. I'm gonna teach you about this real estate game, whether it's duplexes, triplexes, multifamily, you know, single-family homes. I'm gonna show you how the electricity systems work, the HVAC systems, how old galvanized pipe gets flaked on the inside with rust. How you can get PVC to come in with your plumbers so your your tenants don't have problems while you're out of town. If I tell kids that, they're like, nah, I don't want to get into that. But you're going to be making money the rest of your life off the rental property. But you would rather buy a $11,000 bag that ain't nobody going to notice in five years. That's going to depreciate in value. you rather buy that, that, that chain that chain that's hanging around your neck with, the, you know, with your little medallion with the diamonds on it. That's the people say cars depreciate. Cars do not depreciate like jewelry. If you don't believe me, go buy a piece. Go buy your, your little Jesus piece, your, your little diamond encrusted uh, initials. Go buy it. And the day after you buy it, take it back to the custom jeweler. Now you spent $1,500 on it. You spent $4,000 on it. You spent $10,000 on it. When you take it back, he's going to be like, I, I, we, we, can't, we can't take it back. No, sir, I need to sell it back. If it's worth what he said it was worth, why he can't buy it back? Think about that. It's no different than buying a Honda Accord, a Honda Civic, a Lexus, an Infinity, or an Acura, and the day you drive it off the lot. I mean, that markup on that car was 60 grand. You can't resell it for 60 grand the next day, depending on what type of car it is. And those cars that you see, the Lambos and the Ferraris and all that stuff, that's a different type of car. Some of those cars cost $900,000. That's why those cars hold their resale value. You got to be a pretty rich person to own a $900,000 car. I have a friend in Miami. He knows the Sultan of Saudi Arabia. He has a yacht that's $400 million. Did you guys hear what I just said? So you're not impressing anybody. You're not impressing anybody with bags, with shoes, because there's someone out here. When I was in Doha, Qatar last year for the World Cup, believe me, there's somebody out here that is way richer than the person you think is rich. So what are you chasing? Next question. All right, yeah. Thank you. So the, um, and just to give some credits to the to what you just brought up about the gold chains for those who like rap music um good j cole has a cold has a song called chaining day on his second album that vividly expresses what kevin just said so if you you're unaware of it there's that there was a question that came up on facebook it's talking about uh player patience he says when players have journeys how much does patience play a part in that player's journey that player, when I will, I will specifically talk about an NBA player. An NBA player has to realize from the day they know they could be drafted that it's their journey and not their family's journey. It's their journey. 
They want to have children one day. They want to have a family one day. They want to have a productive life when they're done playing basketball. So you get drafted. They say if you pick one through 14, you're a lottery pick. You're not a lottery pick until you make lottery money. So in their mind, they don't have patience. So they're like, I'm a lottery pick. The NBA flies. The first 20 picks in the NBA draft are flown to New York by the NBA, and the NBA pays for their hotel rooms. They pay for their um, travel for two family members. They do these expensive dinners and stuff like that. But my point is this. Why would you take 25, 30 family members to the draft and you don't get a game check until October 15th? <laughs> Think about that. You're not patient. You started out on draft night not being patient. And what I've seen from NBA kids, if they're that dude that'll fly 20, 30, 40 family members in, do a draft party at the Westin, draft party at the Sheraton, I'm going to do a draft party at the Four Seasons. Do you know how much rooms cost at the Ritz-Carlton in the Four Seasons? You haven't even made money yet, but somebody's willing to give you a loan to do all of this stuff, so when you start getting your game checks, they are already tapping into your finances. Those same guys get to the NBA team. They think, man, I'm I'm a I'm a number seven pick. They better be playing me. We got number eight, nine picks that go straight to the G League. There's the patience thing again. Somebody in their family is telling them you should be starting. Man, Bam Adebayo is an Olympic gold medalist two-time All-Star, a senator that won the Skills Challenge, been to the NBA Finals two out of the last four years. His first two years, he didn't play a lot. He was patient. He wasn't like, man, if he don't play me, I'm going to go crazy in the locker room. He was patient with his finances. He was patient with his coach and the administrators with the Miami Heat. He was patient with the way he, well, now he's buying crazy cars and it's a lot of players. Bro, you didn't even make it past your rookie deal, but you bought a Ferrari. What are you doing? Just because you make 80000 a month doesn't mean you need to spend 80000 a month, if that makes sense. So patience with NBA players is very hard because of the peer pressure that a lot of them have from their moms, their dads, their aunts, their uncles. Hey, can you help me start my beauty salon? Auntie. You just been doing hair for 20 years. You don't know how to run no business. Now he gives her the money to start a home beauty salon and it fails in two years. I see it all the time. His uncle is a shade tree mechanic, been changing brake pads under a tree in their hometown. Now he done got him a little shop. Next thing you know, the uncle don't know how to do invoices, doesn't understand taxes. Next thing you know, you just gave him all that money to start that, that mechanic shop and it's gone because he didn't know what he was doing. And the number one thing that a lot of them haven't been patient about is restaurants. Restaurants get a lot of them because they got an auntie that can cook good for Thanksgiving. They try to start some restaurant, but they don't understand the business side, the tax side, the invoice side, the human resource side of how to do hiring. They don't understand it. So that's let, a great let, question. Let me chime in on that too, because that's some controversy came with Kevin Lee given some uh some critiques of black owner atlanta restaurants uh, about a month ago okay and this is really what he was talking about like it, it wasn't that the food wasn't good necessarily it was that they didn't know how to effectively run the business and and a lot of black folks took it personally so but we they took example. it personally they took it personally because they didn't listen to number two and number four, let me say them again. Incisive judgment. Number two, emotional balance. Number three, moral and spiritual rectitude. Number four, acceptance of reality. If you don't have emotional balance and you can't accept reality, two and four are going to always sway you. What you mean he said that about the black restaurants in Atlanta? What you mean? Well, he said it because one of them, you went in, you ate your collard greens, you ate your ribs, then you went in the bathroom and the toilet didn't work. I mean, acceptance of reality. Yeah. 
had you went in the, you went in to order some fish and the line was so long it took you 20 minutes to get one piece of fish acceptance yeah. of reality like nobody cares about race when it comes to reality and having emotional balance but go ahead no absolutely uh we had another question what was the biggest transformation you had when forming your own personal brand uh, getting the hood out my mind. You know, they say you never, you could take a dude out the hood, but you can't take the hood out a dude. I tell people this, and my mentee is on here. Um, I told her this a long time ago. I'm what they call a 5149. A 5149 is I'm 51% intellectual, and I'm 49% straight ghetto with me apart. And that was hard for me. When I go into, when I was going in the boardrooms, even when I was in the U.S. Air Force and I was excelling in the Air Force and having to talk to generals and colonels, and I just was so raw, man, because I grew up on Phillips Avenue. I played basketball in Claremont and at Pila Recreation Center. Like, I had to fight for my basketball when dudes would try to take it. And it, it's just part of who I was in my DNA, and I had to soften myself up with my brand and be like, I'm still hard around the edges in some ways, but I can't be that way in public, if that makes sense. Does that answer that question, D? Yeah, I think that that may have answered that question. Um, the last question I had was just a clarity in the, um, the, the previous question about the patients. It was talking about from a young kid's perspective, um, being patient in their development. You have to, let me say this. You cannot chase anything, okay? Being patient is don't ever put the cart before the horse. You got a lot of young people out here. They in seventh grade. I'm going to be a millionaire. How do you know that? I mean, you can have the work ethic to be a millionaire, but it may never happen. You can get to the military. I'm going to be a four-star general. You may go to a and for ROTC, come out as a first lieutenant, go all the way through, be the quickest guy to ever make major, and you still, your, your ranking just comes to a halt when it's time to become a colonel. You don't control your destiny in this life. And there's a huge level of patience involved in stop telling people what you're going to do. Everything I ever did in my life, I'll tell young people this. I was able to be patient with my own personal development because I never told anybody I was going to do anything. I never told anybody I was going to do what I'm doing now and never knew I was going to do it till I was at Greensboro Day teaching school. And Mike Rowan called me out of nowhere and it changed my life. But this is the key. I was prepared. When he called me, opportunity plus preparedness equals success. He didn't call me and I didn't have a suit available. He didn't call me and I didn't understand how to talk to people to get things going when it came to athletes. I understood the assignment and I was able to do it. But for some of you guys that, you know, man, I'm going to be the starting. It starts when you're young. I'm going to be the starting running back next year. And then some dude moved to your middle school from Texas, and he's 6'3", 225 in eighth grade. He running over the coaches when he run the football. And you like, man, I thought I was going to be the starting running back. No, life changes like the wind, and you have to be able to make those adjustments. And do you remember when I told his kids about um, wisdom? Wisdom is one's own direct proportion of one's own awareness of one's own ignorance. When you come to see that you are not as wise today as you thought you were yesterday, then you're wiser today. Wisdom, I'm going to say it again, wisdom tends to grow with one's own direct proportion to one's own awareness, looking in the mirror of one's own ignorance. When you come to see that you are not as wise today as you thought you were yesterday, then you're wiser today. Patience is huge, but you also got to have a work to go with the patience. 
And if you have the work to go with the patience, you will become successful in many ways. But don't put a ceiling on where your success lies. Don't tell yourself and your friends, man, I'm going to have me a Bentley one day. You end up in a Honda Civic. Now you're depressed. Don't tell somebody, I'm going to be a billionaire. You end up being a thousandaire. Now you're depressed. You're telling, man, there's people out here, man, I have a, com a huge compassion for mentally disabled kids and physically disabled kids. I got friends in my life, man, when I have my son, he going to be a stud. He going to be a football guru. He going to be the quarterback. And his the son was born mentally ill. You see what I mean? The son, the daughter was born with spina bifida. She in a wheelchair her whole life. It'll God will humble all of us. Your patience will be. Let me just get to the next day. Let me do it the right way. See, I never smoke weed. There's no person in the world that's ever seen me with a joint in my mouth, with a pipe in my mouth, with a cigar in my mouth. I never smoke cigarettes. Never. Never. No one has ever seen me driving drunk. I've never gotten a DUI, DWI. See, patience is I'm going to do it right every day, every minute, all the time, and it'll come like it did for Mr. Graves. I'm going to be on time all the time. I'm not going to be drunk and miss the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> I'm not going to cheat anybody. I'm not going to sell drugs to my own community and then turn around later talking about, yeah, I made it, you know, but I just had to do that. No, you didn't. You didn't have to sell drugs. You could have been patient. You wanted quick, easy money. Anything that seems too good to be true is too good to be true. Today, you driving a Range Rover in high school. Tomorrow, you locked up with 40 years over your head. It, it, I've seen it happen to people personally that were great friends of mine. Yeah, un unfortunately, I have as well. But that's that's a, that's a side of growing up. Phillips Avenue, which is a much more nuanced conversation. So we'll, we'll right. leave it there. The last question was, uh, what are some good ways to maintain good personal branding? The best way to maintain a great personal brand to me is to make sure your routine doesn't change. Make sure your brand is what they're looking at. Remember what I talked about with the water, with the tap water, the Aquafina, the Dasani, the Fiji? Fiji is what it is. It's expensive for a reason. Imagine you go in the store, grab that Fiji bottle today, and you drink it, and it start tasting cloudy. You're going to stop buying Fiji. Does that make sense? If you go in and you um, buy some Dasani, but it tastes like lead tap water, you're going to stop buying it. The way people view us is really our brand. And if you want your brand to remain excellent, you have to be the same person all the time. I can't open doors for women, children, and elderly and practice chivalry because somebody looking at me and News 2 got their cameras on. And then someone sees me and no cameras are on, nobody got they, their, their cell phones out. And I just slammed the door in front of a, a, a young lady or elderly woman. Does, does that make sense? Integrity is doing what's right, even when no one else is looking. Oh, I'm going to do my schoolwork because my mom said if I get straight A's, I get an iPhone 14 plus. OK, I ain't getting a new iPhone this semester. I got D's and C's. I mean, like, what is that? Your brand should be. I'm going to go hard. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to practice integrity. I'm going to serve other people because it's two types. I talked about the rich thing earlier with people who get to a certain level. And not only do they buy Rolexes, not only do they buy $900,000 cars and $300 million yachts, they start treating people different. I'm telling you guys that right here on this call, I live in a world where sometimes to me, it's disgusting. Because you have money, you change who you are. Because you used to be the guy valet parking cars. But now that this guy's valet parking your Range Rover, and because your Range Rover is an autobiography and it costs 
thousand, two hundred seventy thousand. You mistreating him. You did. I think you scuffed my car. You talking crazy to him, and then you won't tip him. Think about all the service workers in this world, the valet parking guys, the people that the hotel maids that clean your hotel room. Think about the waiter and the waitress at your restaurant. And then think about the people that run them people crazy and give them nothing. Won't even give them a 10 percent tip. My ice cubes weren't they weren't cold enough. My fork had spots on it from the dishwasher. My this, my that. Two types of people in the world, young people. People who want everybody to serve them and people who want to be of service to others. You only wanted the two. I want to be of service to others. It was that was that it, D? Yeah, that was all the questions that that came through in all the chats. We're trying to keep up with all of them because we, we're streaming everywhere. So oh, okay. if, unless anybody else wanted to um, chime in with a question, we, we want to thank Kevin and definitely respect. It's a very busy schedule. Um, Kev, as always, brother, much love. I appreciate you coming every time you come to um, you. You reinforce what we teach you. And that that's how we choose our, our, a lot of our speakers it, it's, it's to reinforce exactly what you distribute and it's a good opportunity for everybody to hear it from a different voice same message different voice sometimes but it still gets heard differently which means it's accepted differently and that's always good and positive so thank you again brother i appreciate it i will be in touch we will listen do man thank this, you. i promise you yeah thank you guys for having me Thanks for the opportunity and thank you for what you guys do for young people. It's important. Absolutely, man. I, I appreciate that. And thank you. Uh, we're going to do a uh, five minute break for everyone here. Uh, we're going to come back and get into the workshop. We only got 30 minutes to do it. So it's going to be a bit of a crash course, but it won't feel like it because you got a lot of knowledge in the last hour and 15 from Mr. Graves. So it, it it won't take us as long, but it will give you some new concepts. We will do the Jeopardy afterwards, and we will um, disperse whoever wins the twenty five dollars. I'm pretty sure it's going to be Tommy because he's won the last three. And then um, also for those who are interested, if you're in the Durham area and you want to attend the uh, workouts today, a lot of people have been questioning. It. We will be doing the workouts at Lion Park from 12 30 to 1 45 so anyone that wants to come get some work before you go back to school and get to your school teams on monday feel free we're going to be working on some um advanced dribbling and um and uh drive attack concept so uh we'll see you back in five it yeah right around five minutes and um We'll get we'll get into the workshop. All right, everybody, welcome back. Got this weird music coming from the video. Sorry about that. So give me a second, real quick. Has everybody had a chance, as you can see on the screen? to download the workbook. That is fine. I'll give everybody an opportunity to um, download the workbook here in a second. Um, you can find the access to the workbook in the chat. And for wrap, I, I, I read your, um, messages. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we will definitely stay in touch. But I want to give everybody an opportunity to 
take it, download it if you need it. If if you can't download it in a second, you'll you'll be able to follow along. And then we'll go into the game. And the game info is also in the chat. We'll make sure that the um actually I don't I don't believe it is in the chat. I'm gonna add it to the chat now. So you'll be able to access the game through the link that's in the chat also. That being said, let me get back to the shared screen. And we'll get started. Of course, if you downloaded it already, you saw we had a little bit of a change in here. So we'll get through this as quickly as possible. Um, just to quickly go through... This is our last um, speakership for the year or workshop for this year. And enjoy your pagan holiday um, or whatever holiday you are enjoying this year. But happy holidays to you from myself and I said I am dope. Um, for which those of you who are new, I am dope. Dope actually stands for developing ownership of personal empowerment. So, like I said earlier, nonprofit mentorship that is heavily anchored in workforce development. We want to build tomorrow's leaders is our tagline, and we mean that. We have four pillars for which we do it with as wellness, both mental and physical, work, uh, life skill enhancement, um, leadership building, and career and setting them a set them in the path for our career pathways so we we study careers we have the three main pillars pillars i'm sorry and then we study put those resources together to build them for their next career because again our program started with athletes but the question that i had to ask everyone was what if being an nfl or an nba player doesn't work out for you then what's next Somebody else has to care about your future just as much as you do. So we supply those resources to do just that. Um, all we need is attention, engagement, and willingness to learn. And you're all good, which is a lot of what you heard Kevin talk about today. Um, and we'll start there. What is your brand? In essence, it is your reputation. If you saw the animation video that went out, um, the Harvard Law, oh, I'm sorry, the Harvard Review Board has a very interesting take on it with seven steps to building your personal brand. Um, that's posted on the um, Facebook and Instagram pages, the video. So if anyone wants to watch that video to read through it, feel free. We'll also uh, post it to YouTube so you can see it a little bit later if you want to see the um, the animation. But we'll start with three strong elements of building a personal brand. And I see that we have everyone on, so follow along as we do it. Um, I'm going to call some names, and we'll have you read through this to get the engagement, but Establishing a strong personal brand elevates your position, whether it is for career, your role on a team, whether it's athletic or just at work, uh, role in class, school, et cetera. So three elements that build clarity, consistency, and constancy. And again, we're not making this up. Kevin and I didn't put this together beforehand is what it is what he covered as well so i'm going to start with tommy tommy could you read through clarity for me please sir the first is clarity 
That means you are clear about who you are and what you offer. This is important because if you try to serve everyone, you end up being too generic. Strong personal brands are based on differentiation, not blending in. Absolutely. Going back to what Mr. Graves talked about, look at look at what everybody's doing and do something different. All right. Consistency. Let's go. I'm gonna go second boo because I I wanna I wanna know who that is. Welcome, second boo. Okay. We're gonna go Robert. We're not gonna learn who second boo is today. Uh the second element of a strong personal brand is consistency. Consistency means that you deliver on what you say you will. You have the same uh, message each time. Consistency means you also present yourself in a consistent manner online and off across all platforms. Absolutely. And again, same thing Kevin talked about. And I, I promise y'all we did not put this together with Kevin. It just happens to be the thing. So hopefully... Everybody understands that. Let's go Eona Wright for the last one. Constancy. Constancy translates to making your personal brand visible to the right people who need to know you. You can't disappear for months on end and hope that people remember you. You need to build in nurture relationships and find tools that allow you to communicate with your audience or target market regularly. Thank you. Again, all all things that he covered. Along with that, something we didn't cover, but it's it's something that's near and dear to me because it, for, for those that know me, I've been in marketing for quite some time. And one of the premier elements of marketing that a lot of people don't talk about, and to be honest with you, some marketers don't, especially in sales marketing, they don't pay close enough attention to, but it's psychodynamics. So... I found it interesting to find the psychodynamics that come to personal branding that's attached here. And we'll go through these fairly quickly. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because I want to make sure that we got we have enough time to get to the game. But it's the way people perceive your brand. And there's a way that essentially you can connect. So like a connector, for example, are people who bring people together, people who create communities. Then there's the selective psychodynamic, which it's a it targets only specific audience segments. Um, a careerist, they find that career achievements are the top of their priority. Altruist is are those who are absolutely one hundred percent committed to helping others. Then you have a hipster. Uh, personalities which they focus on individuality and then of course you have the boomerang that share controversial information in order to load discussion so i can't remember the his name is that his actual name is kevin but i forgot his last name but he's at, he's out of charlotte he does this um for those of you who, who may not be aware there was a um a controversial post that went out about a young lady who was going to Cheesecake Factory and the young man who was taking it there and they ended up having a conversation in the car because she said she was too good to go in Cheesecake Factory. Well, number one, that was a hoax. But number two, that gentleman was the one who initiated that entire thing. So it was staged to induce conversation throughout society. So it was it ended up being very provocative, very controversial. It, although it wasn't real, he would be considered a boomerang. And I, I hope I find his name for you later, but I, I forgot his name right offhand. And then, of course, three tips to uh, building personal brand, create a brand personality, um, ask opinion leaders to endorse you, and establish a strong presence. So it's, again, going back to a lot of what Kevin talked about today, it was, um, you know, you choose a suitable niche and make that your brand. 
get opinion leaders to endorse you. So that's that's what Kevin has done. He's he's done that. He he built his brand off of um the the things that he sees fit. He talked about that very very in depth, and then he's done things like get opinion leaders to endorse him. Um, not sure if anyone knows this, but uh, another friend of the show, a friend of the program, uh, Mr. Um, Fred Whitfield had the Southeastern Guilford basketball court named after him yesterday. Kevin didn't mention him today, but Kevin was there to um, to support Fred Whitfield. But Fred Whitfield is Michael Jordan's person. He was Michael Jordan's personal attorney. He's also the, um, the president of basketball operations for the Charlotte Hornets. And one that many would consider to be an opinion leader. And that's that's somebody that Kevin, I've done some work for. Kevin's done some work with. He's been much, a much more of a stronger mentor to Kevin. So that's that's another piece of that. And then, of course, establishing a strong presence to everybody around you. Team, family, co-workers, classmate. They all form a good basis for your brand development. So just stay active and we're just going to run through three people who are great personal brand executives really quick as Elon Musk. Everybody knows him from Tesla. And um, of course, X the new Twitter. So I had some feelings about, but I'm going to hold those to myself. Uh, Kylie Jenner, uh, known for makeup and Sean White known for skateboarding. So, really quick, has everybody downloaded this? Because we, we went way over, and I wanted to make sure everybody had a chance to go through this. So, let's at least get through this first part. There's five questions here. Um, and I'll just read through it. Let's start by unleashing everybody's super skill really quick. So people with strong brands care about who they are. They know how to maximize their strengths and I, and identifying what their strengths are very important. So I want to give everybody the opportunity to uncover and define what your skills and strengths actually are. Think about it very introspectively. And this this um, process is to do a document, distill, and validate. We probably will only get through the document, but I want to make sure that we at least document it. So if everybody take about two minutes and just answer these five questions and to the best of your ability with the time that we have left and just think about what are your strengths that others acknowledge in you? When you work on a team, what role do you seek to fulfill? When you have an obstacle, what is your go-to to overcome it? What's the most successful project you've been involved in? And what is the most important team role you've ever fulfilled? And I, those, I know it's going to take a little longer than two to three minutes. So as much as you can do. And just let me know if you have any questions. And then I'll just call on everyone here shortly to share.
All right. Anybody want to volunteer to go first? Um, I got one for the first one, if I can say something about that. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so... Oh, I didn't hear this. For the first one, I said that um, I'm smart, uplifting, and very responsible for my plans in the future. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. All right. Number two, let's go Iona Wright. I'm going to skip around. Um, when working on a team, I just seek to be a team player, be one that, you know, can be helpful to everyone and just be known for kind of doing my part. I, I, I like the fire. Thank you. I, I love that answer. All right, let's go. Tommy, number three. What do you do when faced with an overwhelming obstacle? Tommy, I called on you on purpose because I've seen what you can do. I just wanted to see if you could see it. Uh, I don't, usually I like, like in the moment I try to like figure out what like the best way to deal with it is. And if I can't, then I'll try to like come back to it and like focus on overcoming it. So what would you say your go-to skill is in that moment? I don't know about like a specific skill really, but. Yeah, so I want I you to think about this a little more introspectively, but I'm going to say from observation, it's your wit. So think about that later. Get back to me later on it. But I, I would say it's your wit. I, I've seen you in overwhelming obstacles. The way you've dealt with them has been with your wit. All right. Robert, mm -hmm. what's the most successful project you've ever tackled that made you successful? Uh, I didn't get around to that question, but no, let's the answer. most successful project I've ever tackled. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't got around to that. To, uh, it could be anything. Like it's don't you don't have to talk <clears throat> about it in terms of a school project. It could be. It, what, did you have to build something in the house? Did you was was there a task oh, you given uh, from your team? It could be anything. Probably building my dresser. Okay. What made you successful in building your dresser? Uh, I was consistent when I when they came to following the rules, and I got it built pretty quickly. Good. Consist back back at consistency. We we're seeing the theme. All right, and second boo, I'm gonna try to get you to talk one more time. It's the most important team role you ever fulfilled and why? All right, second, Bill, we're going to change your name to Ferris Bueller in a minute. Kayla, it's the most important team role you ever fulfilled and why? Um, team role. I'm going to say most important team role ever fueled in why. I think about that one. Maybe like being in school and working with like my classmates on like a project or something. Mm -hmm. um, Use as an example, what was your role in that team? Were, were you a um, leader? Were you following? My role was to basically usually like write everything down. Like the person is telling me what to do or like telling me all the information and I'm just writing it down or something like that. Or like okay. we're just combining or like contrasting with each other and just talking about what we can do to put on the paper for the project. But you were in charge of the notes is what it sounds oh, like. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So this and for everyone who's ever worked with me under coaching or anything like that, you'll hear me say it, be a leader in your role. And that was the purpose of this. 
We're going to skip the other two, which is distill, because that comes with a little bit more, and validate. We'll end up reusing this um, workbook when we do another um, personal branding workshop, because that's that's a part of them. So we'll, we'll revisit this one, because I want to give everybody the chance to win the 25. Of course, as you can see, there's um, words of value that you can use in here also so if you were able to download it feel free to come back and win it if you did download it you this is an interactive link go ahead and click it and we will start the game hold on let me make sure i'm sharing the screen so you guys can see the game So I'm trying to make sure I get it so that I can present. All right, so you can either, everybody can see my screen, right? All right, so you can either scan QR code or go to the link in the uh, chat. Let's get let's get everybody on. All right, we got Kayla, we got Robert. Iona, thank you. Come on, time it is like you being on the court, man. Got to sprint, Tommy. My bad, I'm showing this on in now. <laughs> ah, Robert, I don't know what you're doing, but jump back on. There we go. Tommy. All right, we got it. I think that might be it. Yeah, we lost second boost, so that'll be it. Let's get started. All right, it's all... um. Multiple choice, 60 seconds to answer each question.
All right, we got three. The right answer. Moving on. All right, we got Robert in the lead. I like this one. It, it gives you points based off of how fast you answer. All right, here we go. Question two. What are three elements of a strong personal brand? Just so y'all know, the fifth person is me. I can't win the game. I just want to know if I remember any of the answers. Ten seconds. Everybody got the answer right. All right, still got Robert in the lead. Somebody beat Robert. All right, question number three. All right, we're moving on. Let's see who's in the lead. Yona's catching Robbie. Oh, oh. Got a race to the finish. It's going to get tight. Question four. All right, everybody got that one. Let's see who was the quickest to the draw. It's getting tighter. All right, Robbie, I know you back there sweating, though. All right, question five. Boomerang is a personal branding type that focuses on individuality. It's going to get a little tricky. Oh man, let's see who let's see who missed that. Okay. All right, let's keep it going. The group that covers brands that target only specific audience segments is called. Probably should have went through this a little bit deeper. But if you did download the workbook, you can go cheat. All right. So I don't count myself on um on selective, but I'm all right, Yona. Still catching them. Still got time. Still got time. All right. Here's question number seven. The blank personal branding type finds achievements as their top priority. All right, that's cool. Let's see where we at. Oh, it's go oh, it's getting real tight now. 
All right, Yona, you got two more questions to potentially take the lead. We go. The personal branding type cares about bringing people together and creating communities. Man, I forgot to answer this. Yeah, let's try it. Yeah, I'm the only one that answered it wrong. I put the thing together. All right, let's see who answered it the fastest. Uh oh, you know, <laughs> took the lead. All right, last question. Man, anybody to get this wrong. We just got to reevaluate a few things. All right, everybody answered. I'm the one that answered wrong. I did that on purpose. All right. So was musical artist Kevin Gates our speaker today? Obviously not. Now let's see who won. There it is. Congratulations to Iona. We appreciate you today. So, Iona, here's what we need from you. First off, um, do you live in the Durham area? Burlington. Okay. So here's what we would like for you to do. Um, if you were, were you contacted from either a text message or email this morning? I don't know. Um, I'm actually, it's been the girls and I who answered it from, um, one of the group homes in the area. So our, okay. um, director gave us the information. Gotcha. Okay. So here's what I would have you do. If you don't mind, I'm going to type in the email in the um in the chat uh -huh. if you don't mind send us an email to claim it and we'll get it over to you um first chance we get and then just let us know in the email how many of them are there we'll see what we can do to send send that group some swag boxes oh all right can we say thank you? Yeah, say thank you. Here, thank they you. Would, they would say thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. I'm glad you all were able to attend. Are you guys able thank to come on camera real quick so I can see it, see the group? Hold on. Oh, let's see. How do okay. Where is it at? Can you see it? Yeah, I, I can see, see them. Well, I see the You TV. can see it? Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. I got to turn it around. Just, uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, young ladies. Any Anytime you want to come to these, let us know. We'll put you on the mail uh, for the uh, newsletter and we'll, we'll let you know when they are available. But thank you all. I enjoyed it. Robbie, Kayla, Tommy, good job. But Tommy, you, you, you were the reigning champion. That $25 is going somewhere else this time. So Thank you all. We'll we'll see you the next time. Again, if everybody could go to the uh in the chat, there's an exit survey form. Please click on the exit survey form there and do the exit survey if you don't mind. And if you want to go watch it again, it will be available on the YouTube page. Um you can access that from www.imdopenc.org. You do have to put in either the HTTP or the www for some strange reason. We haven't figured out why yet, but just add that to it and that gets you to the website. Um, other than that, thank you all for your time and attendance this morning. This has been wonderful. Again, we want to thank Mr. Kevin Graves for wonderful, wonderful speakership this morning.
Um, he always does a great job. So think we want to thank him again. And as we say, we'll we'll see you the next time. Enjoy your holidays. If we don't see you before the holidays, happy new year. Enjoy the time, and we will see you the next time. We'll see you in January, as a matter of fact. Won't leave it that open. We'll see you in January. Thanks, everyone.